So four years ago, uh, I had a young man come into my classroom, and it was Cade, and he spoke with me about the different things that he might want to do. He'd never been involved in ag before. Uh, talked about maybe wanting to be involved in livestock showing, livestock judging, maybe even public speaking, a number of different things that we offer at Hydro Weekly. After speaking to him for just a few minutes, you could tell that this was a very motivated kid that wanted to be involved in whatever part of FFA that he could be a part of. And he had a very inviting personality, so immediately I knew I had a good kid that I needed to plug in somewhere. I uh, started showing pigs as a freshman in high school, and I just started because I wanted to be competitive. We really didn't have the sports I wanted to play here. We didn't have football or wrestling. And it, I talked to Mr. Clausen quite a bit, and you know, he was always telling me how competitive it was. Uh, I guess you could say I'm a mentor for Kate or a, a brother. I guess sometimes he even calls me father, so whatever you want to call that. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Kate about three years ago at OIE. There was this kid just kind of sitting over there in, in, on, on a barrel, not doing much, and I accidentally actually got his pig out. And I was telling Kyler, I said, you know, this pig's not very good. We're going to have to work pretty hard on it and, and everything else. And he popped up and he said, okay, what can I do to make it better? And I said, well, buddy, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know that was your pig. You know, I said, I'm here to help now and I'll do as much as we can, you know. And I just, I felt terrible uh, for what I had kind of previously said. And he just laughed about it. And he said, you know, I don't know much about what I'm doing. And because I just, I really enjoy showing pigs. That kind of tugged on my heartstrings a little bit, because uh, right off the bat I could tell his work ethic was just unmatched. About midway through him showing, uh, he wanted to take that next that next step. And we sat down together and decided what are our goals gonna be. And he said, goal number one, I want to win our county livestock show. Perfect. Goal number two, I want to have a pig in the sale at Oklahoma City or Tulsa. Perfect. And then goal number three is, well, I wanted to have a breed champion and a major. Well, it wasn't too long after that he won the county show, so he checked that off his mark. Uh, he was reserve champion do rock at Tulsa, so he made the sale with that barra. And then all he had left to do was have a breed champion and a major. Well, it came to his senior year, and that was the box that was left unchecked. So when I had decided to, that I wanted to help Kate and, and do the most I could for him, uh, I met up with him one day, I came back from college, and we kind of sat down and I asked him, I said, you know, everybody's got different budgets on pigs, and, and he had kind of described to me, he said, well, I'm working two jobs right now, uh, you know, I've got a little bit saved up, and I would like to buy three pigs with it, and it, it wasn't much. I had never been a part of that, I'd never seen a kid come up with basically money from his piggy bank and say, hey, I want to show pigs with it, uh, and invest everything that he had worked so hard up to that point just to get. Uh, back into show pigs. On top of that, as we kind of kept going, I told him, I said, let me know and I can help you with feed or, you know, if, if we need to do this and this feed instead of that feed or whatever to, to cheapen it up. And he said, no, I want the pigs to have the very best they can have. And so, and, and that meant him working hours that most adults don't want to work, uh, you know, to get the money for all this. So I have to pay for everything myself. I get up around, and I'd be at work at 6 o'clock in the morning for my first job. I'd get there, work for a couple hours, go to school at 10 o'clock, and then I get out of school about 1.30, and I go straight from there and I go home and change clothes and go to work at the grocery store in Hydro. And I stay there to usually to about 7.30, kind of depends on if we have a truck that day or not. And as soon as I get done there, I go take care of livestock for a couple hours, and then I go home and then I get up the next day and just do it again. One of the things we do at Hydro Weekly is we try to make sure every kid has the opportunity to be successful. And one of those things that we do is have a school farm where kids that live in town or maybe even out of town that don't have facilities to house their livestock have an opportunity to have a good facility where they can put those animals at, whether it be cattle, sheep, goats, or hogs. Um, the kids are expected to maintain the farm. Uh, the mowing, the, the general look of it and the appearance of the facility, keep pens clean, uh, practice some different biosecurity measures, but all in all we provide that facility, we take care of their utilities and try to have something for them. So we're very fortunate, and I say this a lot, to have 
an ag teacher like Mr. Clawson, and a president like Cade has been this year. Cade has always been one of those young men that is reliable, responsible, one that you knew that you can entrust with anything. So going into my senior year, we knew we wanted to uh, kind of go out with a, with a bang, and we, uh, we were pretty confident going into Tulsa. We had a good York that we thought was going to go pretty well, and it, it didn't. And so we kind of got our, me and Brayton got our heads together, and we're talking about OIE. And I felt bad a little bit. Going into a senior year, you know, you try really hard for those seniors. Uh, try to get them the best pigs you can, and sometimes they just don't work out. And I told Kate, I said, hey, sorry, and we hugged it out, and I said, all we can do is regroup and, and try to get better for OIE. My goal for uh, my senior OIE was just to get in a limo. I mean, that's every Oklahoma kid's dream is just to ride in that limo. Well, he didn't just have a breed champion. He had the crossbred breed champion, which would put him in the driver's seat for the grand champion bear to OIE. We, uh, we carded him at 263 pounds, and we ended up going in the, into class nine of the crossbreds. And me and Brayton kind of talked before. We knew that was going to be the heat class, and it was, it was make or break at that point. And we knew getting him, he was already a make or break pig. Like, if Hogue didn't really care for him, it, it, was, it was go home. So we rocked into class nine, and uh, Hogue talked him pretty well in class. We, we went out there for division, and after I win my division, that's when I really, I knew, I, me and Brayton, we talked after that, and I was like, dude, we could really get a whole piece of this pie. We went out there and showed for Bree Champion, got that done, and then going into the Grand Drive, the mock Grand Drive in the, in the, in the big house, that's where, I really, that's where I really was nervous at, because I didn't know how, we, how it was gonna go, how it was gonna play out. I knew the hamp was pretty good, but it just kind of worked out in our favor, I guess. After Cade won the Oklahoma Youth Expo, we were all extremely excited for him. And not just him and his achievement with his pig, but also the achievement as a person. Uh, Cade is loved around the community. He works at the grocery store. He works at one of the local gyms. He is at all the sporting events, sitting on the front row, supporting his high school classmates. And we thought the best way to support him in return was to go out and try to raise some more money for him. And that was a great way to show our respect and appreciation for such a great young man. Cade came to this community and was immediately embraced by our, our public. Uh, Cade has tremendous support from all of our, our uh, alumni, all of our booster club, all the members in our community. Uh, it's needless to say that anybody would take their shirt off their back for Cade. We expect Cade to be a hard worker. We don't want to enable any student for anything, but any student that wants to be involved and wants to be successful as a community, we're gonna find our way to do it. So before running the Youth Expo, I kinda had plans to, I mean, to get through college, and it didn't matter how I was gonna get through college, if that be joining the military to get my college paid for, or, picking up as many jobs as I needed to work through it, but now that I've, that I've won and have a, little, have a little money and offers behind my belt, it just kind of just has helped guide me into the right path and opened up more doors for me. I told him from day one, I, I, I didn't, didn't care where he went in college, I just wanted him to go to college. Uh, and that, that opportunity wasn't available uh, necessarily for him uh, in an easy route or an easy fashion uh, until he got started in the agricultural community, I'll say as a whole, um, just the support and backing of what can happen when you when you put a group of ag people together and support a kid like Kade Ray and believe in the leadership and, and the the skills that he's learned throughout just just FFA and being involved and around good people that we have in this community. Having Mr. Clawson as an advisor over the last four years has kind of showed me what it's like to have a good ag teacher and what it what it's like to be successful. And that's kind of helped guide me to my decision to have my major being ag, ag education. And uh, God might have other plans for me, but as of right now, that's, that's my course. That's the kind of person he is, that he wants to help anybody and everybody who wants to be involved. And I think that's just why he's gonna make an outstanding ag teacher one day. So I always tell myself that somebody always has it worse than you, so I never use that as an excuse to get out of something. So, I mean, everybody has to get up and everybody has to go to work, but 
It's just the ones who show up to work and the ones who put in the work will rise to the top. So I kind of just have that mindset, if you put the work in, it's going to pay out in the end.